I wish we had a monograph in the works because we would just lift that directly. It, it's, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, um, that slide, next slide. <laughs> Um, as uh, Paul uh, already mentioned, the, so we uh, the, our operation is little unconventional. Um, we started uh, our firm from uh, Boston um, in year 2003, and uh, as we we're getting bigger, um, we have to decide how we're going to operate our office, and uh, we decide to. Um, the, instead of growing bigger, we decide to multiply. So, um, the multiply our presence in uh, many different locations, so Boston, New York, and Seoul, to reach out uh, local knowledge and local market, of course, and to build a closer relationship with the clients. And the way we um, the work together between these three micro office. Um, the, we collaborate uh, in, the, in the bigger scale project. Um, and also there is an advantage of uh, being able to work um, 24 hours um, because of time difference. And these are the, the location of the, the project that we, we got the commissions from the clients. And, uh, and you know the the topic of interdisciplinary, of course, is on everyone's tongue, and and we are also guilty of this. But uh, we we we're trying to um, work in 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 some in a way that we're calling convergence. So these aspects like social um, aspects, zoning, structure, context, sustainability, and program, we 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 want to more explicitly organize them in in a, in a structure like uh, something like this, where. A lot of times, and uh, it, it's difficult not to do this, we, and, and we, we do do this as well, um, uh, there's a kind of additive way in which one moves through uh, from programming to, to structure, to context, to, to all these aspects. But we're trying to think of them in a, in a si simultaneously, simultaneous way, so they begin to, in a, in a way, cancel each other out. Um, as Paul mentioned, sort of form uh, kind of uh, paradoxes, perhaps. Uh, but also um, where, where form um, takes multiple, uh, uh, let's say, it works in multiple ways instead of just singular ways. And, uh, you know, our name is from the single speed bike, which is sort of a kind of mascot for, for that kind of thing. So the first project that we uh, like to talk about is White Block Art Gallery. Um, that we recently completed um, in Korea, uh, Haiti. The, the site of this is, uh, is unique. It's right near DMZ, um, where you ha uh, we have a border to North Korea. Um, the, this, the, the Haiti the, uh, is an um, art village uh, where only art-related program and artist residents can go there. Um, and the, that this, the, the context of uh, of uh, the this village uh, was the the kind of intense uh, this uh, the political um, the political conflict and uh, so you can see if you have uh, this North Korean um, then the in and with the this the, the barbed wire that you can almost see the North Korea um, the, the, uh, the across the river that the, that creates the, this um, intense atmosphere whereas the 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 the, 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 the village itself is uh, they create the calm and the the art atmosphere which is uh, there is some kind of irony is there the other irony uh, is that um, the client actually, um, doesn't have a, the idea of what kind of artwork that he's gonna exhibit, and doesn't have any uh, the character of the gallery. So we uh, the, the 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 scheme that we came up with is that this uh, 
to um, utilize um, the, all the space, including the fire uh, stairs, um, to, uh, to be able to work as uh, the exhibition space. So we uh, uh, designed this, uh, the 10 different uh, space, exhibition space, that with the different the, the proportions and different light conditions. So that the, the, when the when clients bring in the, the artwork, there is a place, the optimized place for that artwork is there. Um, so you can see that you we brought in the um, this stair, the fire staircase up to front, and the corner very visible uh, corners that that becomes the the exhibition space for the, the art installation piece. And um, the location of the, um, the building is, is um, right in the middle of the, the village. And, the, and it faces uh, um, the pond. So the, our building um, that automatically blocks the butte pond from the, um, from the neighbors. So we uh, kept the, the view through the buildings um, for the neighbors. And that is the view from the, um, the lake. Um, the other effect is that the, the, is because it's near DMZ, there is a strict uh, regu regulation about height so that you know, the military um, the, the the flight needs to uh, fly over, so the um, within that tight boundary, tight limitation, um, the we we uh, need to pro provide this uh, flexible flexibility in this uh, exhibition space. So the this is the comparison to this conventional. Um, exhibition space where you have big open space uh, and you use the, um, this mobile wall or the, the, the temporary wall to uh, give up flexibility, then the, our approach is that to be um, more specific so that the in the in proportion and the light condition again is more specific so that it, it gives a, a variety of the spatial condition. So in, um, as you walk through uh, along the circulation, you go through you, you can feel the change of the, the space in, in the proportion and the atmosphere. And the, so that the, in the viewing sequence, you uh, can keep this, the, the interaction with the, the inside and outside. So the, the, the usually you get the, um, in the conventional uh, gallery space, you, you are forced to focus on to the artwork where you get the this museum headache. Um, then uh, the space you get the more uh, you uh, you you can have uh, this relief uh, relieved uh, moment between the viewing sequence. Um, so these are the uh, um, general plans. So you enter through there, and the so you as you enter through there uh, through the the. The entryway, um, you have uh, this um, this uh, very condensed, compressed uh, the space with the dark material. So that that also the helps to um, to frame uh, the view to us to the, the the lake in the opposite side, and this the curved space curved the entryway. It gives a, um, a very light uh, indication of the entry, and as you go in the, to vestibule, the inside of the, the glass got um, slanted, so that that orients 
to the 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 circulation to the the where the circulation starts. <coughs> so as you um, you can uh, the almost the, the follow through the 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 building uh, circulation uh, very um, naturally and going through this this a different kind of uh, the space and go up to go out to this space where um, the this the owner of this the gallery also uh, has uh, this uh, the the um, performance uh, the company so that they can uh, he wanted to have uh, this as the space for the event and the space for uh, for conference so along this the um, the edge, there is a um, the roll, rolling shade, so it can com be completely closed up. And you continue to go up, um, and then on the, arrive on the second floor, and you enter through this um, the gallery space. And the, during this um, again the um, the sequence of viewing, you can keep on. Uh, looking out to the nature. So that's the section they're showing through this, the, the contrast between this condensed, uh, com compressed uh, experience of entryway and the, this expansion and openness to the, the lake. So each gallery has a uh, different the light condition again and shows the inside of the gallery and the uh, outside of uh, and that l leads you up to the third floor up to this the the roof garden the also this the the um the this main circular uh, circulation space uh, which we call the uh, super core that that helps the, the natural ventilation and natural stack ventilation uh, throughout the space. So although this is the, the gallery space, we try to utilize the natural light and natural uh, ventilation as much as possible. Um, the scheme of the facade is the, 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 the interaction of the nature is the one of the, the important thing. So that the we um, there is the, the regulation for this the 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 trees um, around the, this area is pear trees and so we wanted to use this the uh, blooming um, the season of pear tree and we want to, to celebrate and the, so during the blooming seasons that um, the the fruit uh, the clear part of the fruit glass can be filled with the, um, the, the, the trees, I mean the flower. So we develop the, the also the, the fruiting helps the, the, um, the cutting glare and the heat gain. And we, um, we studied, we developed this, the, the, the pattern with the, this, um, uh, parametric um, programming that we developed, and the, the, that is the, um, the result of that. And also the freeing uh, also um, emulates the, the, the fog around here, which is a very um, typical condition around that, the, the climate. And uh, uh, one of the things is that we are, these are a couple really quickly just uh, some house projects that were predecessors to the White Block Gallery. And we always think uh, now we don't have to hide from our clients and, and we, we tell them that when we're designing your house, we're actually designing a library. We're designing an institution or a museum and, and your, ho your house is merely a rehearsal for this larger project. Uh, but not to diminish that the fact that the house is an incredible uh, place of... Um, of uh, experimentation. So we we found a good rapport with our clients who actually want to design museums, but they can't afford them. Uh, and, and so uh, the, the, the Coulter House, um, it, it's merely a second story addition. Um, and it, 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 it was a kind of a 
led to the white block in a way in, in terms of the design strategy where we weren't allowed to expand the footprint of the house because of zoning regulations. So we took the volumes of the second story and, and merely split them apart. Um, and so that you get something much lighter on, on the top floor. And it was also a kind of um, rumination on, on uh, uh, how can we fold in issues of lighting and cooling into the design so that, that uh, you know, we can um, use both in collaboration and sort of uh, move away from our addiction to, to air conditioning. Also, the budget was incredibly um, limiting, and so we, we, we uh, uh, beseeched the client and said, look, you guys don't have enough money for air conditioning. That's just the way it is. Uh, but uh, it, it was, in a way, we had to sort of put our money, put their money where our mouth is and, and really make this thing work. So some of these spatial seams that, that appeared in that diagram are something like this where the, the concept of interiority doesn't stop inside but, but is actually spatialized um, inside. So these are gaps that are, that are within the house but they appear as kind of exterior outside of the three boxes that we placed. And then in terms of the lighting strategy, this was the, in the lower corner here, this is the existing house, it's very long and deep, and they, it, during the middle of the day on a bright day, you had to have the lights on all the time, it was just that kind of space. But uh, a series of cuts then um, allows the daylight to come downstairs. But it also is simultaneously a daylight strategy, but also a ventilation strategy that naturally ventilates the house um, through these clear stair windows. So it, it, it eliminated altogether air conditioning. And, and there's not an air conditioning system in here. Um, and just very simple things like uh, uh, the overhang of the roof so that uh, a thermally massive floor can be heated up during the winter, but then that floor stays very cool in, in the summer. Uh, th then these gaps then became areas for water collection um, where the roof pitches into a kind of garden that, that then extends the, the bathroom and the bedroom areas. And so here's the Here's the addition. And, and uh, right after that, right before we're doing the white block, we, we did another house called the Braver House. And, and uh, we, um, I'm glad you picked up the uncanny in our, in our work, Paul. Uh, the, the, the roof pitch, it, we're in a neighborhood of pitch roofs, but our pitch roof was um, generated from the azimuth of the sun and the dimension of solar panels. And so it, it it hopefully uh, does strike a kind of suburban profile, but also brings into question uh, that profile and, and presents a kind of uncanny uh, massing that resembles its neighbors. And so these are our neighbors. This is our building here um, with, the, with the panels on top. And uh, the panels are also calibrated so that you don't see them, because we, we think that solar panels are also like air conditioning units why, uh, or mechanical systems. Why show them off? We're in the kind of era where we want to display them, but in fact, they're actually really ugly, so why not actually integrate them into the uh, geometry of the house? The, the neighborhood is filled with these um, large seven to 9,000 square foot houses that have been aggregated over time, a and uh, it's a pre-war neighborhood, so the lot lines are very close, but you get massive houses. And so this was a kind of critique on that, on that size thing, uh, where you would normally build out the, the legal setback, but we were proposing something much smaller but, all, but building a screen or a fence out to that legal setback so the perception of the house expands from the interior to the outside through these kind of small gardens. And then we, we also expanded our, our idea of energy. Um, can we also deal with uh, water heating, lighting, cooling, and heating now um, and begin to sort of uh, 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 diminish this, this, uh, this need for energy? If we think of this as a suburban house and a suburban alternative, um, if, we, if this is a repeatable model, I think it could have a, a larger impact. But then also uh, potable water, this, this pie here, which is almost a third, um, gets used to watering the lawn. So um, behind this suburban-like fence, we, we put uh, you know, uh, landscapes that don't need any water. So here's that kind of fence. It's almost like a protagonist that, that plays itself through inside and outside. And uh, in plan, uh, where you have a very small dining room, can, do we also define the space of the dining room as something much larger? Um, the, 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 there's another stack ventilation core, but this time we're trying to incorporate heat into it. So during the uh, winter, um, you know, the heat from this, this uh, appliance, um, I'm calling it appliance, but it's a wood-burning stove, is drawn through the house. 
uh, and also the floors are heated by the um, hot water solar panels um, on the roof. So the, his previous bill, which was $250 a month, is now something like $19 a month for, for the winter. And then the upper floor talks about a, a kind of shift in section, uh, both in section, section and plan. Um, this is what it looks like here. And the reason for that, that shift is, uh, well, it, it's, it's to also push the uncanny a little bit, but um, it, it's, uh, uh, it, it's to deal with the, the, the um, proximity that you get when you build an oversized house in, in a pre-war lot. Can, can this shift elongate the views both in plan and, and, and take, take advantage of this underutilized space? Can it also um, extend the views in, in section as well? So instead of seeing odd scenes from your neighbors you're, oh, through the side yard, you're also you're looking over um, your own yard. Um, and this is what this is a kind of detail of that shift. But these are the kind of moments that one hap that that happens when uh, that that shift in plan and section happens. So um, the. Along with the, the, the hidden ambition um, that John talked about, the, we are, when we get a commission um, from the client, we are, we are trying to the, the address, the, do the project more like as a, a prototype um, to, to, to address the, the broader issues, broader uh, social or cultural issues. Um, so this uh, project is the um, issue space f uh, for the three families to share um, together. Um, those three families, ha they have their own um, the primary residence, and but they need to have a residence, another residence, to in Manhattan uh, for their the work and the lifestyle. Um, so the, the we the designed the space to um, to bring in the maximum uh, flexibility, um, so that the you, the three different family can the, convert the space uh, the, as their need. So the the and the, we looked at this uh, the this client conditions uh, more thoroughly, and the, we. The, we found this this is very typical um, the phenomenon uh, in this high density uh, this, uh, high density city. So these are the, the the potential user of this kind of space where the this the these people actually have their own residence, but then and that's because of there are a lot of needs. So that the 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 city um, appears very dense, but then if you look the the actual occupancy, then you realize that the occupancy rate is pretty low. Um, so the, if you divide that the, the space they need uh, into the the, the, um, the crucial elements, and then the, the bring in the flexibility, um, then we can and so that the different kind of this user can share the space, then we can raise the, the occupancy rate of the space. So these three families, they uh, the, the plan their the occupancy um, uh, by the, through the, the Google Calendar. And the, so these are the typical, um, the city, um, and with a lot of units, and this is uh, the like, actual occupancy. And if we uh, make it um, condense uh, so that they can the share, then the, the we can we we can have uh, this uh, the amount of uh, the the empty um, the space where we could the. The use for um, the public space or public housing or public uh, uh, buildings, um, and that potentially that, that lowers the real estate um, real estate price. Um, so going back to the space itself, um, because of this, uh, the clients the spend the relatively um, intense and condensed time. So 
in here, so we try to maximize the the the, the experience. Um, so there's the the wall um, gets slanted to have a, a, the view to the Empire State Building, and the slanted wall also allows this um, the the room um, to have uh, the the view to the major uh, side. The, the slanted wall actually is uh, um, composed of a different kind of program, and the, the, so the, some parts is used by uh, used as uh, the, the storage space and desk space and um, the entry doorway, and also the um, this is the actually door to the the kids bedroom. I mean, bedroom. bedroom. Um, and the, this the aluminum curtain uh, actually did this creates the space, creates the boundary, uh, as well as uh, the path. So when you go into the the door, which is also is uh, used as uh, the closet. So going through the closet, um, and the, there is the the space which uh, where we designed the furniture. Uh, to, to maximize the use. And the, um, this, the um, sharing units that we designed um, is uh, the horizontally uh, adjustable um, so that, the, that you can uh, place in different kind of uh, um, height of uh, objects um, when, you, when you slide. Um, and the, this aluminum mesh curtain that we used, uh, um, we we put the lighting outside and inside, so that it li if it, we lit outside it looks um, opaque, and if you lit inside it looks uh, transparent, to uh, control this visual privacy and the sense of boundary within this space. And these are um, this is uh, another um, the very tight confined space that where we uh, explore the the boundary with this the screen. Um, we are asked to design the um, the space uh, the cubic curve space two meter by two meter by two meter in the Gwangju Biennale um, 2008. And so we designed this, um, the tight space, we did limited opening that you can see that one person barely um, can enter. And the, when you um, go inside, um, there's um, the floors and the fishing um, line creates this, the, um, the new environment and with the, the reflection of the the, uh, the reflection by the, the mirror that creates the, this infinite space with the, the, the new the landscape that is uh, um, created by uh, this, um, the green fishing rod. And this cut by, through the reflection, this cut also uh, creates the complete shape so that uh, you can, that you have this, the, the the objects, the flooring inside of the, the space. And these are the another project that we uh, we um, designed as a, the, the part of a prototype. Um, is that the eight towers uh, the, is a, a part of the all those hundred project. Uh, Ai Weiwei and uh, Harjung Dimron uh, selected the 100 architects to build 100 villas in 100 days, uh, built in 100 days. And Jenny uh, and Duane are part of this group too. We're and Paul. And Paul, oh my gosh. <laughs> Who else is in the room as part of it? Um, so these are, oh, is it you? No, do we have any? Oh, that's oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was going to point Ai Weiwei, <laughs> but, uh, um, the Ai Weiwei and the 100 architects, and, and that is the, the site. Um, 
so there is the, the site with the, with, there's no uh, context other than desert. Um, there's no street uh, built yet, um, no lot line and anything. So that was the condition that we have to uh, deal with. So we look at the, then uh, who's gonna be the potential user for this building. So th this, the orders is, uh, is uh, located uh, in about one and a half hours away from Beijing. So the, and the, the villa itself uh, needs 30, 35 rooms. Um, so the, we, the, we, we look at this, um, this are, these are the people that who uh, fly into there and their use is very um, limited. Uh, and the, so that we look at the program of the, this uh, 35 rooms and then stack the, the, the rooms by function. So there's the, and to make uh, eight towers. So there's the, the tower for living tower, um, kitchen towers, bedroom tower, and bathroom towers. Um, so that the, you can, the user can turn on and off uh, the tower, uh, the power of the tower, uh, depending on the time of the use. And also this, the eight towers, the, um, the, the, the cast the shadow in relatively short time. Uh, and so it, it's more porous that, that it, it cast the less shadow in the neighbor. And also these eight towers um, decrease uh, there's the more like a community, like um, atmosphere. Entry tower, so when you enter through uh, entry tower, you um, get this, the, the massive uh, lights, um, the lights. And uh, throughout the towers, the, the ex because of the, um, as you have uh, seen the, in the, the site plan, is very uh, densely uh, planned. So in order to have a, uh, uh, openness and uh, keep the privacy. We um, try to uh, bring in the the nature vertically, and so the by doing that we could control the the privacy but openness at the same time. And uh, this is structural diagrams. So we are asked to use a local. Um, construction, um, there is a, a local construction technique. There is a limited uh, budget, um, although it's considered to be a um, luxury mansion. Um, so we, uh, we decide to use a local construction method and uh, material. So this, uh, the, the angle, the, the Actually, is it is it still the central? It is it still within the this the base of the foundation, which is uh, which makes a very stable um, structure. And also, we um, wanted to use the the tower um, to the regulate the energy use to um, bring in the stack ventilation and the lean the um, lean the tower to so that the, we can maximize the use of the sun um, and also the we use the um, use the the recycle water and um, so from the the base basement um, and the, the it is connected to in the in the bottom and then as you go up, it gets separated. Um, what it does is that we, that way we can bring the natural light to the, um, the, the lower part. And, um, and the, when you go up to top, it, there is the, the roof garden and the, the roof garden access for the 
or the different program. And it, the this tower ran into and the collide that create and creates the this uh, unexpected view between the the towers. Um, this view uh, to the north side, so, um, the, so we didn't put any uh, opening there. Um, the lighting in the in the courtyard that creates the um, this the warm atmosphere again. Um, and uh, we put this uh, because of this uh, desert condition. Um, when it <coughs> rains, the the water is drained really quickly. Um, so. We put um, the the pot, um, clay pot, uh, in the in the garden so that it can hold the water uh, for times so that, that we can uh, put vegetation. Um, and also, um, right after rain, where where the water is still there, that, that it it makes uh, this um, uh, reflecting pool so that the it can uh, reflect the building that. that uh, helps to uh, the image of uh, this the tower. And and so, uh, can you see the time? How are we doing? Uh, in terms of uh, thinking, uh, in terms of prototype and systematically, that we're doing a series of uh, eating establishments um, called Clover in Cambridge, but they're expanding to New York. Just so you know. And, and this was in this restaurant, um, which is a series of restaurants, is in the Holyoke Center, um, which is a Jose Luis Cert design building on the ha Harvard campus. And so we we start we start from the very beginning with a, a lot of our clients with uh, the idea with uh, basically conceptual based ideas of of, of how things um, can potentially work uh, in a, on a prototypical level. So. Um, where where food travels uh, from these mega factories across the U.S. Uh, you know, 1,500, 2,000 miles before it arriving um, in the Northeast, uh, th we imagined another kind of system that it's it's, it's based around a hub, where um, food is uh, local food is is uh, is brought to oops is brought to the uh, uh, this thing called the hub, and and uh, did the microphone just go off or am I okay? Can you guys still hear me in the back? Okay, and, sorry about that. And and then through the hub, the the food is redistributed redistrib um, uh, through restaurants, uh, which is like the Holyoke Center, um, uh, food trucks, and and also uh, a new thing called pods, which are deposited in urban areas um, where where you can't actually have a building or or a truck. And uh, it's all veg vegetarian food, by the way, but that's not part of their branding. It's it's uh, we're we're trying to like uh, not even mention that in the branding. But also the idea of transparency becomes really important in where the food comes from, the whole mechanics of it, uh, we want to visualize it. So there's literal transparency with the use of glass and open areas between kitchen and customer. But uh, the, the food is also, uh, the orders are taken from staff that are on the floor. They're not behind a counter. They're taking um, orders through their iPods. And, and, and so you get a very direct interaction. and, and uh, Everyone is trained to, to know what is in the food, how it's produced, and so you have a conversation about the food as well. So it's rethinking the idea of fast food. Um, and then um, one of the, uh, the tools we had with a very extremely low budget was, was uh, demolition. Um, how, how can we um, you know, use a demolition crew uh, to, to uh, spatialize this project? So we began to uh, carve these voids into the existing building and of course, take out all the carpeting and hung ceiling and everything that was in the space before. Uh, and so it brings in natural light um, in, into this area, but also allowed us to to uh, um, solve the handicap code as well, which which didn't which uh, uh, didn't allow us to use this mezzanine because it was a different experience. It was closer to light, but as soon as we uh, 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 carved this in. Um, we could fulfill that sort of handicapped um, experience uh, criteria. Um, this thing is not going. Okay, there's an animation with these seats, and they can be reconfigured to, to make uh, different social groups, but it's not playing. Um, and here's the carve out in the ceiling demolition. Uh, there's a, a, a wire trellis um, that, that uh, with climbing ivy, kind of reference to Ivy League a little bit, tongue in cheek. 
Um, and this is the existing skylight that was uh, uh, covered over, but now is, is bringing light all the way down into the space. And there, we, we, uh, um, you know, we collaborate with the client in, in trying not to have any kind of branding in the space other than uh, material or, or food or, or, or program or activity. Uh, but there is one hidden branding moment um, with this with this uh, wire trellis. There's a C sort of embedded, um, and when it, the IV climbs, it, it might appear, it might not. We, d we just don't know. And so in terms of that systematic thinking, um, uh, 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 this was uh, yeah, uh, a project where we reused parts of the uh, the interstate I-93 as it was being demolished uh, for the big dig, and and we want to also think of this prototypically. But unfortunately, most of this material has has been uh, destroyed or, or thrown out. But uh, our question was, you know, with the miles of highway that are being taken down in Boston, that were taken down in Boston, how how can we give this a, a kind of second life? Um, and, and then what are the criteria of that? Like in standard framing, um, the, the code requirement is 40 pounds a square foot, but uh, there's a thing called HS2044, military loading for all highways. They have to sustain 250 pounds per square feet. What does that mean when you bring that into, into a setting with people or, or in the residence? Can you uh, put uh, you know, massive green roofs? Can you rethink the, the objects of domesticity? Can you rethink what kind of pets you can have at home? And, and so we began to look at it as a kind of prefab system. And, and here's an image of, of the salvaged infrastructure and the house itself, um, which in retrospect, we, we are, um, since we're confessing a little bit, or uh, Dwayne and Jenny talked about not being happy with some of their, their previous work or having moved beyond it. We, we, were, we had to go through eight months of uh, 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 neighborhood reviews with this one. And, and so we, we, well, you know what happens during those. Uh, the, the project was a, a bit diminished, we think, conceptually, but, but we think as a system that it's um, that's something that, that could be uh, forward-looking, um, especially as, as uh, highway and infrastructure projects are actually um, increasing at, um, at a really amazing scale in the U.S. Uh, so many bridges actually have to be rebuilt. Uh, and then we thought about some of the other objects that, that begin to you know, uh, be used as a kind of palette of materials. These are um, box beam formwork that was uh, discarded, and so we use them as planter beds for the roof garden. And then uh, using this system, can we begin to think of a, a range of buildings that instead of becoming obsolete, th the materials can be reassembled in different configurations, even to, to create something like a mid-rise block. Uh, and, and these are, you know, a, a lot of these infrastructure projects that are underway. Um, can we begin to think in a more global scale about reusing this material? But not just the material, but, but labor. The infrastructure workers are, are highly specialized, so they move around the country almost like migrant workers um, from one project to the next as, as one cl comes to a close. So as the big dig came to a close, uh, there, there, were, there were thousands of, of workers that were out of work. In fact, um, this fellow was was uh, um, had had lost his job after uh, completing the big dig, um, but was able to now help us on this project during construction. So, can we then think of labor as as sustainable if we, uh, you know, reuse our infrastructure? Can we also keep the labor pool more um, from from having to move around? And this is a section where there's a kind of immediacy between the. Um, the roof garden and the interior space. These are literally the, the I-93 highway panels and the view of the roof garden. One of the things we also um, helped integrate was uh, uh, using a cistern that was being thrown out. Um, and we, in a kitschy way, we, we saved the manhole cover as well. Uh, and, and the roof garden is 100% is um, watered by um, uh, rainwater collected interior views. So these are some of the raw materials that were um, being disposed of. This is another project that we um, deal with the, this infrastructure scale uh, development and the sustainable system. Um, th so uh, this is the, um, the, the site is near um, Songdo, um, 
the, 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 some of you might um, already know about this uh, project. It's a massive infill uh, land uh, with the um, it's, it's new cities. Um, it's going to be built um, near Incheon, which is uh, south, I mean, the east, no, sorry, west of the uh, Korea. Um, the condition of uh, this, uh, the, okay. um, so this is the, the um, it called Amdo, which is the, there used to be island. Uh, now it became the part of the, um, the, the part of the land because of this, uh, the, through this massive infill um, development. Um, so this is what it used to be. So there, the 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 path to this island is uh, appear and disappear that depending on the tide, and this is the current situation. So where the the identity of uh, this island got completely lost, and uh, the area view, and the, the this is our scheme where we um, try to re um, revitalize the uh, the the surrounding uh, by creating this the um, the water park um, and the 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 and the the um, the finding the identity of the 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 island and when we look at this um, the the operation we look at the the local industry where is the the fishery industry um, and we look at the this the the, the the waste material that is coming out of the, the industry, and the, so we use the, this, the the abandoned fishing boats and the buoys and the ropes uh, throughout the design. So the for the abandoned boat fishing boats, the to use that to make uh, this artificial uh, reef, the where that helps the the sediment of this, the the species. Um, and also for the the buoy, um, we um, wanted to build this the bridge, um, which we uh, got a hint from this the local um, the technique of uh, building um, the floating bridge. Um, so the 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 recycled buoy that we use um, to build this floating um, bridge, which is uh, um, is a is a the pedestrian path and the biking path. Um, is uh, the it connects the the land to the island, and the the we the also put the this um, the oyster farm underneath to purify the the water condition. And the so the the um, the bridge is uh, actually is hovering over the over the water, it's not touching the ground. Um, so that the, it keeps the the this uh, the underwater ecology um, safe intact. Um, also, this the shape of bridge also the 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 forms as a um, inclined seating, so that when the the city has uh, the this national events that can be used as a massive seating and works as a plaza where people can gather. So this is the, the sequence of the, this development where this is the current situation where you can almost the, the see this infrastructure that forms the, this uh, unique geometric shape which we took advantage of uh, to make this the round, um, the inner sea. And then we we built this the artificial reef around the edge, and the, the, throughout the, this tighter um, the movement that it, it creates the natural um, sediment um, and the, makes the, the the habitat for the the different kind of species, um, local species, and also that creates the the topography. On the water, so that brings the, another the habitats for the the fishes and the the, um, the creatures, sea creatures, uh, and that uh, the habitat is uh, uh, connected. Uh, that creates the, the the path 
along the edge and also is connected to the, the path around the, the city. One last little uh, recently completed project, um, also in the, in the Haiti Art Valley, was a, a kind of interactive uh, sculpture um, that we're calling Cloud that responds to, to almost makes visible what's, what, what's invisible, interactions between people and weather. Uh, and so it, 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 it tracks m motion, but also begins to uh, connect between uh, two parts of the site, the waterfront and the street. Um, and then in terms of uh, uh, um, weather, um, it, it begins to track uh, 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 wind patterns, rain, humidity, and, and heat and cold. And, and this is a kind of a section that begins to connect the waterfront and, and the street. So in a way, it's marking a, a, a new path, and then through that path, uh, cre creating, let's say, uh, a, a kind of social condenser that, that, that invites people to gather. Um, and here's an aerial view of that. Some, some stills of how that's reacting. A and the construction is very simple, a um, series of, of uh, steel pipes and, and aluminum sections. But then we were trying to make the structure as, as narrow as possible so that they, the LED array could, could be more present. And so within the, uh, the aluminum extrusions, we put all the, uh, the motion detectors and, and speakers and these kind of things. Um, but, but it was, it was actually a, a kind of a, a battle between the infrastructure, the reality of the infrastructure, and, and the thinness of the structure. So here it is. Somewhere embedded in here, let's, here's one of the speakers right there. Um, it's right next to our white block gallery project. days you get sort of the opposite color, uh, like a cool blue color to, to make you feel like it's cool. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Thank you.